Man. I, you know what I want? You know, I need somebody out there who can teach. Here we go. Cut this. Uh, I need somebody out there who can teach me a little bit of football. I need somebody who's an expert on coaches who script their plays. You're staring at them. You got two in the well, I'm looking Maybe. at Evan and Spadoni, actually. Oh, well, you got three uh, of us. Spadoni. Okay, so the 49ers went three and out and three and out. Yep. Okay. Kyle Shanahan scripts his first how many plays? 15. Uh, th- that's a hard, fast number? Uh, to me. Okay, Spado- is that the number that we all, 15? Yeah. Definitive. Yeah. 15. Okay. Around For, there, sure. Oh, around yeah. there. Okay, so it's it's could be twelve. Well, you, I'm assuming you script your first drive, which okay. could be fifteen plays. Okay, so the first drive they go one two three, punt. Okay, the script. Do they pick up with the fourth play that they were gonna run? Do they kind of have a whole new another script for the second drive? Um. Do, do you go to a – so they went three and out, then three and out again. Then Debo Samuel actually got tackled for a loss. Yeah, well, I was like, oh, my Okay, goodness. so are they I really, Are they still on their script? Hard I'm going court, to say Whatever yes. it is. Yeah. Okay, so then everybody who was saying, well, McCaffrey didn't touch the ball the first two series. Well, they threw it through to him. It was way over okay. his head. Okay. But he had not – he didn't yeah. touch it. So – was it not in the script? The first six plays, the first seven plays, did not include McCaffrey I'm in the saying script. I'm yes. So, does that mean that the first set, had they not gone three and out? And I know these are these questions are probably hard to answer unless you really are familiar, but so for the first seven plays of the original script, McCaffrey only got one ball uh, targeted. Yeah. He got one target. People are going crazy. Okay. I, yeah, I'm just I'm just curious how it all how it all works. Well, you saw the floodgate opened. Why I'm what? not abandoning? No, like what I'm saying is like, my, okay. My here's plan. what I mean. Here's what yeah. I mean. So Evan said, "Well, the script they ripped up the script after two series. That's what it looked like, and that's that's what I'm very cururious about. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just that's one thing I want to. I'd like to learn because they didn't get a first more. down until the second quarter, and that was the kittle. Right, and but that they, doesn't that, mean. Uh, but but I, I, th- I feel like they got their second win. Like, okay, let's. But I feel like those plays were going to be, had they been successful or not, that that was him coming into this game. Like, this is what I'm doing. But Kyle's not Brock. Brock makes the decisions on who's open or who he feels he could get the ball to. But I was shocked in the first six or seven plays. Patoni said it that there was no handoff to McCaffrey to go run up in between the tackles to test him. You're talking about a guy that could go 80 on any given play. Shanahan scripts 24 plays. See, when you script 24 plays, though, that tells me that, hey, team, here are the 24 plays that we're going to probably use today. We re- we need to really lock in. I, like, I'm, I just want to know how, how uh, set in stone the script is. Or does he do- How much the order matters. Or does he go away from it? Yeah. Let's go to, uh, we'll go to Rob in Hayward. Hey, Rob, what's going on, Robbie. man? All right. Hey, how you guys doing, man? Uh, just want to say, uh, like listening to you guys, Guru, Steiny, good chat, man. man. Thank you. Um, just, uh, I just wanted to say first, um, uh, offense wins games, defense wins championships. And the keys to our success yesterday was uh, going in on, on some of my pregame thoughts I was sharing with some of my friends. It was like, one, uh, we got to we got to stop uh, Philadelphia's air raid. Two, our defense, our our guys were, were our defense was uh, good at stopping uh, the run, and where yeah, Philadelphia may have marched on down into the red uh, twice, but as long as we gave them uh, uh, allowed them to just do field goals, we were in the game. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that to me was the biggest part of the first quarter was that the Eagles couldn't get a touchdown. And they, they had a, a they had 124 yards in the first quarter to the Niners negative six. Uh, third nineteen, DeAndre. Uh, did you see that one, Deion, uh, Devontae Smith, Stiney, a screen third nineteen against this bonnet Niner D. 
He ran and got a first down, and that's when I was like, oh, this could be a long day. But they were getting pressure, and you got to give our guy, um, the defensive coordinator, credit, Stoney, for Steve Wilkes for what he did. I think they made Jalen Hurts uncomfortable after those first two drives. It was like, you know what, Jalen? If you do beat us, it's going to have to be in the air. We ain't letting you get to the edge and run. And they just kept him in the pocket, and he was holding the ball. And that's why I just keep giving love to the Eagle. I mean, to the Niners secondary, man, because they showed up. And for the, most of the game, Stoney, obviously nobody was open. And when he threw it, you saw a Niner defensive back make plays. Head turned around, hand up. I'm like, man, this you couldn't have drawn up any better. The one thing that I thought before the game, and I felt like it was – played out immediately was and I like this to me this is always always why I struggle to judge oh a quarterback was good or bad like if a quarterback's under duress he's not going to be good no matter who it is and I felt like the first two series the Eagles put pressure on Brock Purdy they made him very uncomfortable they 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 collapsed the pocket but they had guys outside and guess what he, he rushed a little bit, and he missed the guy, and they didn't get any first downs, and they go three and out, three and out. And then I feel like he he had more time after that. And I don't know what changed. I have no idea what changed, why they went two three and outs to six consecutive scores. Man. But, but to me, what just comes off, just when I picture the game yesterday, yeah. I just feel like Purdy was back there. And I feel like both quarterbacks had a lot of time. Jalen Hurts just wasn't getting rid of the ball, and Purdy was. Yeah, and guys <clears> were open against that Eagle secondary, that his, their linebackers and their secondary. Stanley, we talked about it. We saw Dak, Josh Allen compile a lot of numbers, throwing the ball in between the numbers on that Eagle defense. And after those first two drives, I think Kyle made a statement like, we got to do – we got to attack their weakness – and I don't. I think the Niners had uh, the Philadelphia Eagles and their weaponry uh, under wraps. I mean, covered. Where was Swift in the running game? It felt like the Eagles just abandoned the running game, Stiney. Yeah. And one more thing. Yeah, when you see a score forty two nineteen, you know it's dominance, right? The team with forty two was dominant. There were not. There was not one turnover in this game. And you know, a lot of times, oh, we shot ourselves in the foot. We turned the ball over. This was. We're going to stop you, we're going to suffocate you, and we're going to score when we have the ball six straight times, and that's how it played out. So just from an Eagle standpoint, I know it was a gauntlet. That, what did Ross Tucker say? And I hadn't forgot. You know, the, the Eagles were in a bad spot in this game, but it wasn't fluke stuff that happened. It was we were just more physical than you and were more talented than you, and that's what happened in that final score, 42-19. And if the 42 doesn't ring a bell, it's the same number that uh, the Niners laid on Dallas, another NFC uh, East opponent. And those two games combined, if you care, the Niners have outscored those two teams, two playoff teams, 84, Steiny, to 29. That's dominance. Let's go to Joe in San, uh, San Jose. What's up, Joe? How you doing, man? Hey, good. Um, excuse me. Uh, first time caller. Nice. Uh, I love listening to you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I, um, yesterday was a great game. I, I absolutely loved it. I love how they faced adversity in the beginning, and then they came back and just dominated. I, I believe. Uh, I agree with Guru. We were just way more physical. Debo came in. He was a beast. Wow. Uh, Kittle was a beast. McCaffrey was a beast. We just smacked them in the mouth, and that was great to see. And I do believe if uh, pretty didn't get hurt last year. That we would have handled them just the same last year, um, the same way we did today or yesterday. But um, now I'm hearing, you know, and I, and I do believe that we're we're turning the page. I, I believe the Seattle game uh, showed that, and then we're we're continuing um, the the same kind of play, and hopefully we continue it throughout the Super Bowl. But I'm also hearing from Philadelphia saying that this is their third game in 13 days or something. So I'm hearing that cry about that. What do you guys think about that? I mean, the 49ers went through a stretch like that, too. Well, a little more than Phil. They had short, they had short, they had three games in whatever, 14 or 15 days. And I think that's 
was over the period of time when the 49ers struggled a little bit, right? I can't remember off the top of my head when they had the extra rest or not the rest that Cleveland had or uh, well, they had the Cincinnati Monday had extra rest or something like that. Minnesota's a Monday. You know what I mean. Yeah. But that, you know, at some point in every season, the team's probably going to have to play three games in whatever, 14 or 15 days. It just so happened this was the Eagles' time. The 49ers had done it earlier in the year. 888-957-9570 is the number. Let's go to... Uh, Let's go to Kareem, a Niner fan in Philly. What's up, Kareem? How Kareem. you doing, man? Hey guys, how you doing? Hey, uh, thanks for having me on. Sure, appreciate it. Um, listen, you know, I was at the, I was watching the game here in Philly, and they don't like Philly. Uh, they don't like Niner fans very much. That's for sure. Um, but you know, I was watching the game, and I realized that you know the, the Eagles defense. I'm, I'm a big defensive guy. I love Warner all the way, Patrick Willis all the way down the early '90s to Brian Young and. You know, the, the Niners have a very great, you know, defensive line. Um, and I felt like the Philadelphia Eagles really put them in, in a really good position for Jalen Hurst to really throw the ball more often. Um, is, the, is the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line that great, or is the 49er defensive line not getting the quarterback enough? I was trying to figure that out over time, but I was uh, just unsure. I mean... It's both. Lane Johnson. <laughs> That's what makes it yeah. a great matchup. I mean, him and Bosa, that was that was like WWE for the wrestling fans. I mean, that was a great matchup. But Philly came in. They've earned it, Stani, as one of, if not the best offensive line. And I thought early on, just to, to put them in position to go up maybe 14 points to get those six, I mean, it was almost a clinic to where Jalen Hurts, how clean of the pocket uh, he had to work with. So I think it's a combo. We know how ferocious the two sacks – from the Niners yesterday, but we know they got dogs on the front line and the Eagles got dogs on the O line. Yesterday they met. And if I'm Jalen Hurts and company, I, I'm looking at this game tape like or if, having a conversation with anybody to where it ain't that I didn't have enough time. Guys just were covered and I didn't take off and run. It was weird watching Hurts' decisions. And what did you say pre show, Steiny? If he is hampered a little bit, maybe Jalen looked at this game like you know what? I could take off, but this ain't a playoff game. I'm a bit nicked up. I'm gonna try to. I'm a. I'm gonna do something else as opposed to if all the marbles were on the table. Would we have seen him been more decisive? Because you got Lamar Jackson coming up in a couple weeks, and if he has that, I mean, Stoney, he could have made him pay with his legs. He didn't, and Philly ran the ball. Get this, Donnie. Total rush attempts eighteen. Like that's too low. Yeah. No. I just. I just think that. And I think we're kind of in a weird, weird way seeing it with the Warriors too. Is mm. so Jalen Hurts and the Eagles are ten and one, and the Forty ers are eight and three, and they got a, they got a game to play with. And I just feel like with the with where the Eagles were in this schedule, and they got and they got uh, Dallas next week. Yeah, that. I just don't feel like Jalen Hurts went into this game saying, I'm going to push all my chips to the middle and run every, when I have to. Like, to me, you remember when the, the 49ers loved to run the football and then they felt like they discovered something that game against either Minnesota or Green Bay and then Mostert carried 30 times? Yeah, I remember. And it was because Kyle Shanahan realized as he started to run Mostert that they couldn't stop him. And so he just ran him the whole game. And I feel like Jalen Hurts in a game like yesterday is going to be a little more conservative when it comes to running the ball, when it comes to taking chances when you're down than he might be in a playoff situation uh, when it's when you have to be more desperate because it's yeah. elimination because yeah. it's every every game's an elimination game. And, and, like, this is kind of what I mean with, with the Warriors is, you know, I think the Eagles, they tried to start, they, they wanted to win that game without having to pay the full price, kind of. Mm. Um, because they, they've they had some tough games before. They got a tough game after. Uh, I just think they were, you know, they were due to get beat by a better team if that was, if that was the case. And they just, they just didn't have enough. They just didn't have enough because they've been playing too many good teams for too long. Yeah, and it's just interesting sitting there watching it. And you know me. I jump, I'm like Spadoni. I got Spadoni in me. I jumped to conclusions. And early on, 
just watching Philly. I know the Niners won the toss and they deferred, but to watch Philly just march down and 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 Hurts look like Hurts and they looked all of the ten and one team that they were get into the red zone and the Niners just manned up. I was like, okay, that's a stop. And then to see it again, it's not. I was really worried. Like. It's just amazing how sports works out, and I know one quarter's not the whole game, but after the first quarter was like the the the, the ultimate prize fight analogy of the guys just wailing on you, and you're in the corner taking it, hoping they tire out, and that's what happened. The Niners figured them out, and then six partners, six straight possessions with touchdowns. I mean, on the road, and this is the game of the year. I mean, good God. And I'm going to say this. I'm not writing Philly off. Because, Stani, I think they could come here and give – if they hook up again, it's going to be a game. But that one yesterday was just – if you didn't know, now you know. On both sides of the ball, you tell me or point to a more talented roster. And I know Friday I left here, you threw the Ravens, and I've kind of disrespected them, the Ravens. But I've kind of gone back on that, Stani. But the Niners are like a great happy hour around the Bay Area, man. They are loaded. They just are. Let's go to Mike in Pleasanton. What's up, Mike? How you doing, man? Mikey. Go Niner, baby. Hey, hey. Look at him. I just wanted to call out a couple things. One, yeah. we knew Purdy was going to do that. That was no surprise. Purdy Shanahan, that's going to be all That's going to be all the rest of the season into the Super Bowl. But I want to call out the defense. Mm. 19 points. 1-9. And the only touchdown they scored was that stupid push-tush. That's all they could do. Had no answer for the defense. I think they deserve a lot more credit than they're getting. Well, you just gave it to him, Mike. Appreciate it, buddy. Dude, yeah. no, that was starting. Come on now. They but okay, they moved the ball on them. The Eagles did. But good defense has been, but don't break. And we saw that. And it because I sit here, you talk about the first 15 or 25, however many are scripted. I'm sitting there thinking, and you tell me if I'm wrong, because I don't think I am. Let's just say it was 14 nothing. Does Kyle abandon what they were going to do next? And well, like, you know, like that was on the table for me. Well, now you got to, Purdy slinging it like around. I Evan don't know. Evan's saying he did switch it up at 6 nothing. Right. Like, oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. That's what I'm saying. Right. Did if, if it was 14 nothing, would they have had no with the third series? Well, what's the answer? I, I, I'm not a coach. I don't know. But I'm Evan saying that or anybody else, I wouldn't. Like, I ain't mad at that. Tupac. Paul and Hayward. Hey, pa- hey, Paul, how you doing, man? Good. How are you guys? Dynamite. Hey. How are you? <laughs> nice, nice. Hey, yeah, you asked what uh, the favorite point of, point, point of the game was. Yeah. And uh, for me, it was it was Greenlaw. He shouldn't have got a he shouldn't have got a personal foul throwing the guy out of bounds because yes, he when should. he picked yeah. him up he wasn't out of bounds. He he that's a personal yeah. foul was, in any league. Yeah, he told the, the line. Now. He does that. He did it against Dallas. That's, got that away that goes it. on any player yeah. right now. That that was a flag. I bet you you're in the yeah, minority he, there, he, my he friend. He got manhandled, man. Now that was a favorite. That was my favorite part of the game. Right. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. It's a penalty though. Yeah, I was like, I couldn't believe he got thrown Those out. Those were 49er fans, and they weren't even like, that's BS. Yeah, and Philly was scored. It was 21-13, been, game on again. The ejection, Not so fast. Yeah, the ejection may have been uh, bogus. Niners the, were Allen Iverson. They had the answer at every turn yesterday. And after that ejection and the crowd got going, just like the Draymond thing, that they, oh, you woke him up, they score. And I'm sitting here thinking, oh, man, third down, and we saw the pass. Uh, to McCaffrey, I believe, and it was just game over. We're just the locomotive is going. And Stiney, I just feel like one thing because we haven't brought him up much. Brock Purdy, Magic Johnson is Magic Johnson because he was a great passer. He would be a great passer if he was on the moon. My point is when you look at this Niner offense and watch Brock Purdy when they're humming, Stiney, it's like a great point guard. And that's what he's doing, and that's what he did yesterday. I mean, Kittle was getting the ball. Ayuk, McCaffrey, Debo. And I already told you the Debo stress factor of him pre-snap, him coming in mode. Like, I, that, I would just, that would blow my wig if I was a D coordinator trying to stop it. And the rat on the table brought to you by Atco is Stiney. Philly's got a problem. They got a defensive problem with their linebackers and their secondary, and the Niners took advantage of it and made them pay.